Hey, thanks for watching Weekly Word. We appreciate you watching each week and I hope you'll share it with somebody who maybe needs a word of encouragement and strength in their life. You know, I know a lot of people, including my own family, that we're kind of careful about what we eat. Sometimes people are so careful, they're reading every single label, every single ingredient. Sometimes because they have a bad physical reaction to something that might be in food. Sometimes just because they have certain things that they don't want to put into their body. They're focusing on their health. Now, a lot of us are like that. A lot of us think that way. But I wonder, do we always think as much about what we put in our soul? What we allow to take place on the inside not our physical body, but our spiritual life. You know, many times when we go through times of disappointment, times when there are setbacks, time when plans are always uh, kind of shaky, you're not sure whether you're gonna be able to do what you hope you're gonna be able to do, kind of like what we've lived the last two years. When we're disappointed, when things don't work out like we hoped, it's very easy to put inside of our soul bitterness, anger, and sometimes self-pity. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, Paul mentions those things and says, you know what, those don't need to be a part of your life. Get them out of your life. Get them away from you. And the reason why is because bitterness, anger, and self-pity is poison to your soul and to my soul. So Pastor Ray, what do you do when you're disappointed? What do you do when there's a setback? What do you do when life just doesn't seem to be turning out like you thought it would turn out? Well, I always think about the biblical character in 1 Samuel chapter one. Her name was Hannah. Hannah and her husband, her husband loved her, but her husband had multiple wives and his other wife was having babies after baby after baby. She was a fertile myrtle, but Hannah, was not. In fact, Hannah was not able to have a child and she struggled. The disappointment level was on the rise. The feeling like she'd let down her husband even though he loved her and cared for her and really catered to her needs, she felt she was disappointing him. Make matters worse, the other wife who was having all of those babies would mock her and laugh at her and ridicule her. Easy in that situation for bitterness, anger, self-pity to take root in our lives, but not in Hannah's life. Instead, Hannah turned to God. Hannah did exactly what you and I need to do when life doesn't turn out like we hoped, when we're disappointed, when plans go crazy, uh, when things don't work out like we wanted them to, we ought to go to the Lord and pray, and that's exactly what Hannah did in 1 Samuel chapter one. But what's interesting about her prayer is it wasn't just kind of a casual, hey God, I'm really disappointed, could you straighten this out? No, it was an intense prayer. In fact, her prayer was so intense with such emotion calling out to God, the high priest Eli who saw that, when he saw it, he thought that she was drunk in the middle of the day. She wasn't drunk, she was just pouring her heart out to the only one that could strengthen her and could drive bitterness and anger and self-pity out of her life. When you feel disappointed, when you feel things are not working out like you hoped, don't get bitter, don't get angry, don't get into self-pity. Instead, go to your knees and pray and ask for God's strength, Hannah did, and God blessed Hannah, and God gave Hannah a baby, the great prophet Samuel, who gave so much and who so many benefited from his life. Drive it out, but put in prayer. May God bless you, and we'll see you next week.